How's it going everybody? Too Spooky here. And in this video today, we're finally going over some interesting information about another Pokemon. This time around, we're going to be counting down 10 facts about Mew. This video was suggested by these lovely people right here. I actually wanted to put out this video around the time that Let's Go was first released, but time just kinda got away from me. But regardless, I'm happy to bring this one to you guys now, and in my personal opinion, there was definitely some interesting information in this one. So thank you all so much for that suggestion, and I hope you enjoy. Without any more delay, let's jump right into it. Number 1. To begin, let's discuss Mew's potential as the very first Pokémon. This idea comes from the fact that Mew is said to have the genetic makeup of every single Pokémon in existence, and therefore it is considered the ancestor of all Pokémon. This is also the reason that Mew is able to learn every single move in the games. So with this knowledge, we can rightfully assume that Mew was indeed the very first Pokémon. However, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. To this day, it's still argued which Pokémon actually came first, and for good reason. First, we have Mew, of course, the ancestor of all Pokémon. Then we have Arceus, or Arceus, which is basically the god Pokémon that hatched from nothing and created the universe. Then we have Bulbasaur, the very first Pokémon in the Pokédex. And finally, we have Rhydon, which was the very first Pokémon ever created by the developers. So while the answer is not known for certain, I would love for you guys to take a moment to pause this video and comment which of these Pokémon you think came first and and why. I'll even give you guys a couple seconds to go and do that. Thank you! Number 2. Due to the fact that Mew can learn every move, it can also learn the moves Captivate and Attract, which are generally only usable for Pokémon that are gendered, as when they are used on genderless Pokémon, the move will always fail. Because Mew in particular is a genderless Pokémon that can actually learn and use these moves, the moves will actually always fail. Number 3. When it comes to Shiny Mew, there is only one known way to actually obtain one legitimately, which is via the Old Sea Map in Emerald version, which was released via an event back in 2005 in Japan. So the cartridge also has to be an old Japanese one to have a chance at Shiny Mew. This also unfortunately makes Shiny Mew one of the rarest Shinies in the game, at least in terms of getting one legitimately. Number 4. Mew is 1 foot 4 inches tall, or 0.4 meters tall, and it weighs 8.8 .8 pounds, or 4 kilograms. In addition to that, Mew is known as the new species Pokémon, and it has a catch rate of 45. Number 5. Although at first glance, Mew appears to be a very smooth and sleek looking Pokémon, it turns out Mew is actually covered in hair, which we learned through a Pokédex entry that states it has short, fine, and delicate hair that can only be seen when viewed under a microscope. I just wanted to bring this up because I can only imagine how hilarious, or terrifying, it would be to watch a Pokémon professor try and stuff a Mew under a microscope to actually look at its fur. Number 6. Do you guys remember the world-famous, award-winning, Pokerap? Well, I'm sure some of you out there even know it by heart. But even so, something you might not have realized until now was the fact that Mew was the only Pokémon out of the original 151 that was left out of that Pokerap. You can go ahead and double-check that if you don't believe me, but I promise you, it's factual. That being said, along with Mew 2, Mew has also been featured in Pokémon anime openings more than any other legendary or mythical Pokémon. Number 7. In the Smash Bros. games, you might be familiar with the fact that the Pokéball is an item in the game that you can summon various Pokémon to help assist you in battle. Mew happens to be one of these Pokémon in each of the games, but the interesting fact comes from the chance of actually spawning a Mew when you throw a Pokéball. In the first game, the chance is 1 out of 151, in Melee it's 1 out of 251, and in Brawl it's 1 out of 493. This is actually really interesting because each of these spawn rates are reminiscent of the amount of Pokémon that were in each game at the time of Smash Bros. release. It's unknown if this drop rate trend continued into Smash 4 and Ultimate, but we do know that Mew is still present in both of those games. So it's assumed that the drop rates were adjusted as new Pokémon generations were added, making Mew actually extremely rare in the newest games because we've got over 800 Pokémon now. Number 8. 
As far as how Mew ended up in Pokemon Red and Blue as a secret, Shigeki Morimoto programmed it into the game at the very last minute without the knowledge of the higher-ups at Nintendo. The game had recently been debugged, leaving a very tiny amount of memory space left in the game. Only 300 bytes to be exact. So without the higher-ups knowledge, Morimoto decided to slide Mew into the data before the games officially shipped out to stores, just in case they decided to add more content later on, which would involve Mew. With that in mind, Mew was never actually supposed to appear in the game on release. However, due to a bug that caused a Mew encounter for some people, word to mouth quickly spread and Mew became somewhat of a sought-after myth. This also helped skyrocket Mew into popularity as one of the most popular Pokemon, even to this very day. So without Morimoto adding essentially an easter egg for himself, Mew might not have made it into any of the games period. Number 9 about a year after the release of Pokemon Red and Blue, Mew was actually the very first trademark that was registered for the game, before even the Pocket Monsters and Pokemon titles, which was first granted in December of 1997. They likely did this trademark first because word quickly spread about Mew being a secret within the game, increasing the popularity of the games in general, but also increasing the popularity of Mew itself. So Nintendo probably wanted to get that particular name under a trademark as quickly as possible. Which, if you think about it, they actually did it before their mascot Pikachu as well. Now the moment that you've all been waiting for... Number 10. For the final fact, we're going to be going over some of the lore surrounding Mew's discovery within the Pokemon universe. In general, you'd think that the Pokemon universe is supposed to be its own unique world, based on the aspects of our own. However, in the first generation games, we learn that South America actually exists within the Pokemon universe. We find this out via research notes throughout Cinnabar Island, that vaguely detail an expedition in South America, specifically in the deep jungles of Guyana which is where they discovered and apparently captured Mew for experiments. From this alone, we learn that Mew is apparently from South America, and better yet, we learn that South America is canon within the Pokemon universe. We've seen similar things like this in various Pokedex entries, such as Ghastly being able to expand to the size of an Indian elephant, which we've talked about before. So aside from the regular Pokemon regions, we also know that South America and likely India exist within the Pokemon universe now including animals like the Indian Elephant, meaning that regular animals instead of just Pokemon creatures exist in this world as well. Obviously, we got a little off topic here, and Pokemon have definitely distanced themselves from including real-world stuff in the Pokemon universe, but it was something I just needed to hone in on nonetheless because I thought it was really interesting. But to continue with the lore on Mew's discovery and those experiments, we never actually found out what these experiments entailed, but what we do know is that through these experiments, Mew too was eventually created. Which, something interesting to note about this, is that most of us are probably familiar with the fact that Mew too was cloned, from Mew. However, in the original games, we learned through another one of these research logs that Mewtwo was not cloned, but instead, Mew became pregnant and later gave birth. And what Mew gave birth to was later named Mewtwo by the researchers, which happened on February 6th within the games. So although Mew is a genderless Pokemon, it's still apparently able to give birth through some sort of experiments. And Mewtwo was never actually cloned in the original games, that was something they added later. Instead, Mew is its mother, or father, or both. Finally, the last thing I wanted to touch upon with these experiments is the popular theory involving Ditto. The theory basically brings up the possibility that Ditto is a failed experiment of Mew due to these similarities. Both Mew and Ditto are pink with a blue shiny form, they can both learn transform, they both have the same weight at 8.8 pounds, and they both have perfectly balanced base stats within the games. Plus Ditto are found in Cerulean Cave, which is where Mewtwo is located. So with all these experiments, many people theorize that Ditto was a failed experiment to replicate Mew, while Mewtwo was the successful experiment. In addition to that, there's also a lesser known theory involving the birth of Mewtwo and Ditto once again, which considering Mew is the ancestor of all Pokemon, yet it theoretically cannot breed, it's theorized that Ditto was scientifically created from Mew's DNA for the sole purpose of being able to breed with any Pokemon, which is why Ditto is able to breed with literally any Pokemon that isn't a mythical or legendary. So with all that knowledge and potential theories I just threw at you, I'd love to hear what you guys think the truth is in the 
the comments down below, along with just how you feel about all that information in general. But there you have it everybody, 10 facts about Mew. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully you learned something new. If you did, well make sure to drop a like. While you're at it, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon related videos and comment which Pokemon you would like to learn about next. Follow me on Twitter at 2SpookyTube to keep up with the channel and follow me on Twitch at 2Spooksters so you don't miss any of the streams. But anyways, if you cannot get enough Pokemon content, well be sure to click here for 5 facts about Agron. Or click here for 10 facts about Deoxys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon with a new video.